Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. Happy Easter Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, etc. wherever you are in the world. Uh, we are at the King Power Stadium this morning. Norwich City taking on uh, Leicester City here this afternoon. A faltering Leicester City side, it has to say. Uh, was it four defeats in, in their last six in the league? I think it's one win in six as well. And we'll bring you the team news as it drops in about a minute's time or so. Of course, let us know your predictions. Your can even be your team news predictions if you want. Um, and we will... Uh, we'll, we'll, Flash them up and we'll, uh, we'll we'll address them as and when. Uh, joined by Paddy Davitt. Um, Pad, we've only got a minute, so I might cut you off before uh, beforehand. But the start of a big, big, big week for and insert as many bigs as you want in front of that. It's a big week, isn't it? Yeah, there's a small matter with Derby. Also, Pro a new fluff. What I'd mentioned that. Okay, it's not alive, is it? Uh, probably the biggest up. But I don't know why we're even going down that route, but potentially uh, the biggest Derby since the playoff semi final. I can't think of another one, but anyway, we'll part that. But yeah, that's at the back end of the week. Today, as you rightly mapped out there, Connor, this is a team who, around the turn of the year, probably thought, I thought at least they were nailed on for the top two, probably the title. And now, they're as, as it stands at kickoff, outside the automatics. So, really interesting dynamic. And that's before you overlay where we're coming at it, which is Norwich on the rise. With nothing to fear coming here today because they're playing well and the confidence is soaring. So, um, really intrigued to see this team news. As we discussed in the car over, the Nunes factor is the one for me, given he was running on empty on Friday. Does he go with him again? Yeah, and we will find out in any second now, in fact, and I have it here for you. And the answer yes. is yes, he does. And that looks unchanged again to me. It's uh, gunning goal, Stacey Sorensen, Gibson and McCallum as the back four. Nunez and Kenny McLean as the midfield two. Sarah and Saints on either flank with Josh Sargent and Ashley Barnes up front. And the subs bench, Long, Bart, uh, Duffy, Montoya, Gibbs, Fashnacht, Welsh, Van Hoydonk and Ken Abo. So an unchanged Norwich City 11. Um, Lester's on the screen. And right? Lester's in the sky. I can't read that for the life of me. And I'm wearing glasses. I can, Manson, I can make out Harry Winks, but I can't make Matt out the... Uh, Doyle. Oh, I've got the bench now. Connor Cody's on the bench if anyone's interested. But yes, Norwich City unchanged. And that bench again for you. Long, Bart, Duffy, Montoya, Gibbs, Fashnacht. Finley Welsh returns to the bench. Sydney Van Hoydonk and Ken Abo. Um, any surprise in that really, Paddy, given what we've seen over the last few weeks? It feels... Like David Wagner has, has settled upon a starting eleven that he feels will, will will bring him consistency, particularly given perhaps as he keeps referencing how thin his squad is looking at this moment in time. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the only way, the only reason we were debating Nunes it wasn't because of what he's produced over a body of work in that role. Yeah. It was just, Fatigue. you know, the fact that he'd had two very um, long games, friendly games for Chile, and and that took a toll. And David acknowledged after the game, but they feel obviously in the intervening forty eight hours or so, just under. He can go again. And um, other than that, then, yeah, no, why would you change that? Because that 11 in those formations have produced this run, which has now topped them, you know, for me, West Brom now in fifth, uh, are definitely in the, in the mix, you know, in terms of they're only three points ahead. Uh, and they got what for today. And so Norwich, I don't know, they got a superior goal difference. Not that it really matters in the grand scheme, but, I mean, you could potentially draw level with a win here before they kick off. So, let alone... Shoring up sixth place is, is fifth now attainable, and that is to be even debating that is because of what that mainly that 11 have managed to produce over the um, you know last period. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's any surprises there. Sergeant is a concern because we know now it's quite clear that he's not training at the intensity and with the regularity that the rest of the team are, but he's so important. You've just got to get him out of there. I thought he looked quite leggy, if I'm honest, on Friday. Yeah. And again, a bit like Nunes within within 48 hours, he's got to go again today. Um, you have to be concerned about that because he's, without over exaggerating it, he is the difference for me between what they and where they are now and where they were before he was available pre Christmas. So, but I like what I like is that you know he's seems to be wedded now to Zara on the right, Science on the left. I think that just offers so much more going forward now. That that really it's added an extra dimension with obviously Sergeant and then Barnes doing what they do as a pair and as individuals. So that four for me, until Johnny Rowe comes back, are the four that need to see us through to the end of the season. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I don't know if we're in a position yet to bring you that Leicester 11. I think we might be. We are indeed. Here we go. It is Hermanson in goal, uh, Pereira, Faze, Vestergaard and Doyle as the back four. Winks and Didi and Dewsbury Hall. That's some midfield three for Leicester with Fatou and uh, Mavadidi either side of Dakar and their subs bench. Um, that goalkeeper there. Do you, do you want to have a go at reading his name, Paddy? 
Stolarchik. There we go. Justin, Cody, Chowdhury, Yunus, Pratt, Marcel, Aichi Anacho, and a certain Jamie Vardy. Um, 37 years old now, but still 13 league goals this season. Uh, he doesn't make their, their starting 11. It, it is interesting, Paddy, when sorry, you... Start to y- Wackin, or Yakin, sorry, Yakin Broberg. No, he's on the bench. On the bench, it? yes. Yeah, and yeah. You, made a very ba- you made a very valid point on him as we discussed him on the way over. Given they got him switch and a certain key for more, that might seem a better fit to bring him in for, for Saturday. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Um, yeah, and and that, that does feel like a game that is uh, that is thank you better suited to to, to his qualities, doesn't it? And yeah. what I thought maybe w- would be in David Wagner's thinking is is to almost dip his toe in the water with this one rather than throwing him straight in for the uh, for for the for the East Anglian derby, but that that hasn't been the case. Um, and, and he's opted with sorry, so it's hard to argue with that, isn't it? Because of what he has produced um, in, in in recent weeks, you've got the Norwich team now uh, going down the screen for. Uh, those wondering what the uh, what the eleven is and, and the bench, uh, I'll read it again. Long, Gibbs, Van Hooydonk, Fashnak, Bart, Duffy, Welch, Abo, and Montoya. Um, and 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 that for me, those two, I think what we've discussed felt the only points of contention really, along with any unforeseen fitness issues, was yeah. Nunez, given the the toll that he's had in the international break, as well as um, obviously that that centre back dimension. And you, you feel every game that Shane Duffy's in the match day squad and available is one that's closer probably to, to him returning. He's been quite set and quite settled on that uh, Gibson-Duffy centre-back pairing. Equally, that was a bit of the pairing for, for the poor period they had in the autumn as well. But a lot of these players, of course, were involved. So, yeah, I just I just wonder whether Saturday and Ipswich and Kiefer Moore and, and the aerial, almost unique threat that he brings aerially will bring Shane Duffy back into the 11 for that particular contest. But it is a chance, I guess, for, for Jakob Sorensen again to... Um, to, to to show and, and stake his claim. And obviously, um, he, he has been given an opportunity now to put some games together. And I don't think he's, he's looked too out of place beyond a couple of moments, perhaps, uh, in the game. Well, on, you'd look at it for the goal, wouldn't you? You'd look at it for the goal, really, with his position. And it wasn't a natural central defensive position, was it? Got attracted to the ball, albeit an excellent finish for Morgan Whitaker. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you have, have they looked vulnerable at centre-back with him in there alongside Gibson? No, but that's probably as much a reflection of the structure midfield and then those those four we talked about that Norwich looks so more much more comfortable and composed in and out of possession. Balance, yeah, it? the structure's yeah. the structure's a lot better now. And that's a testament to David who we're looking at on the screen now doing a pre match. Looks quite relaxed, doesn't he? Quite happy almost there. Looking at his body language and uh, why wouldn't he be? Because from where they are now to where they were, you know, not all that long ago, it's uh, it's a remarkable transformation, testament to him and his coaches and those players that They've, they've looked within and they've found something that is now. You come here today and can you imagine it, on that run of seven defeats and nine, you were coming here today, you were bearing damage limitation. Now it's al- allied to Leicester who are faltering, one winning six in the league. Yeah, absolutely. You 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 don't really have to make too much of a an argument to suggest Norwich can come here and get something today. Yeah, absolutely. I was, I was going to pick you up on that, on that point in their run of form because... David spoke about this after the game on, on Friday, didn't he? In kind of his pre-match press conference, which was also post the other game, such as the, the the rapid turnaround of events. It will calm down a bit after this week, and we'll get a more regular one for for, for Ipswich. Um, but it, but he said that can almost work in two ways, can't it? Because you can get this a frustrated. Uh, oh, someone missed you on the pod, Adam. Someone missed someone. you on the pod, Adam. Is that his mum on there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not even acknowledging yeah, it. He's not even acknowledging it. He's a consummate professional. Um, but yeah, as David was saying, sometimes you can get the flip side of that, can't you? You can get the uh, the, the wounded animal that is frustrated and you, you kind of on the receiving end of the pent-up frustration, yeah. which is why you think if Norwich can particularly manage segments in this game, uh, first 20 minutes feels big. If they can survive that, particularly in in the crowd who will be well aware of Leicester's run, you just think there's a potential for it to, yeah. to, to turn today. And that is where I think Norwich will be able to to make their case and, and be able to feed on some of that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, obviously, we're coming in here. We don't we don't quite know what the, the general mood of the fan base here is, but they, they can't be happy to have gone from a position where they were not a, not a debate. They were Premier League re- returning at the first attempt and, uh, and they're probably looking forward to the summer and, and all that entails. Now, they've seriously got a fight on to, to hold off Ipswich and, and Leeds primarily. So, and on that run... You would think there would there would no doubt be because if you flip it, it was Norwich in this situation. There must be a nervousness and a underlying frustration. And and if if as you rightly say that that first 25, 30 minutes, Norwich not only uh you know keep their own goal intact, but but can can take the fight to Leicester. I, I think that could transmit itself to the to the Leicester players. I thought Harry Winks's comments post Friday's defeat at Bristol were were quite interesting in themselves. That he was talking about effectively we need to stick together, no sulking, nobody, you know. 
breaking off into splinters or whatever. And, and you know, that's an experienced player within this Leicester group. And if he's outwardly messaging that, then that does feel that uh, they're on the back foot, you know, and, and mentally. That's something that I'm sure David Wagner will have rammed home to his players, you know, that uh, they may be coming into an environment here where they, they, can, they can accentuate any feelings of uh, nervousness. Yeah, I agree. I was just trying to, as you were speaking there, look at kind of the, the form tables because, uh, or certainly the home tables, because um, it would be interesting just to see how Leicester have done here because I can imagine they've got some fairly uh, fairly good results. And we, we all know about Norwich City's uh, form on the road and maybe how, how difficult that has been at times. Uh, yeah, I have it here. They're, they've got the fifth best record in the league, actually taking fewer points at home than Norwich have uh, this season, 40 yeah, yeah. points from, from 18 games, still greater than than two points a game um, and yeah it, it is interesting the run of form that, that they have been on um, and yeah in the terms of the form table behind Leeds, Ipswich, Norwich and, uh, and West Brom at home so that does document still and, and we know where Norwich are in that away table not not particularly um, well not in, the, not, in the, not in the upper half of it um, it still goes to show the size of the chance and you only have to look down their, their list of players Harry Winks uh, someone who's played Champions League football Steffi Madidi Abdul uh, Fatou who's done brilliant Pat Sindaka who uh, has obviously played European football Keenan Dewsbury Hall has been linked with, with silly money um, away Wilfred Ndidi as well even the bench Jamie Vardy Premier League winner um, you know Connor Cody we know what he's done at Premier League level over a prolonged period there, there are still some names in there and, and, and David referenced this didn't he in terms of the individual quality that they have that Norwich are still going to have to contend with today yeah, well, I don't know whether it was reverse psychology, but he he was definitely doing a, a good job of propping up Leicester. I mean, he effectively said, uh, you look at the sort of dig down into the stats in all these games, he was talking prior to the Bristol result, I think, but and said they were, you'd be hard pressed to argue yeah. that they should have lost any of those recent games. Went on Certainly to say, that goals, yeah. best squad in the league by miles, I think was his phrase. Um, will get promoted, not even a doubt for him, they will get promoted. So, you know, that might be some clever, clever sort of reverse, you know, messaging to his own players, really. But uh, I mean, those those names, it, it is a mystery to me. But only looking at it from a casual distance, how they have gone down this downward spiral, because you look at that group and the, and and the, and, and the fact that for the t from the turn of the year, they were the standout team, and. Uh, now it's uh, who are you over to? That's just some nice shouts from Japan. So oh right, so I thought it was somebody in the no, crowd. No, 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 no. no. Uh, so. Uh, I just didn't want to cut across you. No, that's fine. No, no, but it is a mystery to me, and maybe we'll get uh, we'll get a, a, an idea of that today. But I, I'll go back to the, the Car Row game, and all those players were obviously available there. And yeah. anybody can sort of recall that. I mean, Norwich, I thought deserves some in that night. Second half, particularly, that the keeper has made an unbelievable save from Shane Duffy in front of the Barkley, and then they really got a second, a breakaway goal at the end. Jack Stacey switched off a little bit defensively, but I didn't come away from that game thinking Norwich were individually or collectively that that inferior to Leicester and you know that's why today despite you look down there at that lineup and you, you I mean Mav Didi he, he feels like he's way too good for this level but the, the stats don't like and the stats are that they are in reverse as a team results wise performance wise and as a result Norwich conversely are going the other way so let's be positive let's get on the front foot and let's get after them and you know Hopefully, we can come away from here with another positive result today and uh, then it's bring on it, which... Yeah, indeed. And, 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 you know, you mentioned stats. I'll bring you another one. Since the turn of the year, Leicester's average possession has dropped from about 67%, I think, in a game to about 50, 58, 57%. So that shows maybe the, the la or loss of control, maybe even slightly, that they've... Um, that they've had in games. So that probably lends into what you're saying, really. That that feels like it's geared towards Norwich going and, and, and pressing them quite high rather than sitting perhaps in a in a low block and affording them the, the, the ball. Of course, easier said than done, particularly when you come to places like this for the quality that they have. But as an approach, it feels like that's the way, particularly the confidence they're in, that feels like the way that they, they should tackle it as opposed to maybe some away games and home games, if you want to reference the Southampton one, where they've perhaps been a little bit more compact and looked to, to hit in transition. This feels like it's there, particularly in the rhythm that they've got at the moment, almost to drop their template onto this game. Yes, but I would caution that any time I've watched Leicester, they do like that. They do like the, the almost rope don't bring you on and then they've got Mavdidi and players like that um, to really profit when you leave a lot of space in behind. And if you go back to that Garo game, it was basically a, a quick transition and Fashion Axe made a bit of a desperate lunge on, I think it was Mavdidi in the box, conceded a penalty. Uh, that's what they're looking for, I think. So I think you have to get the balance right. But, yeah, you're right. It, it can't be a Southampton car road approach where you essentially go the Mourinho, park the bus, let them have the ball, even if that isn't necessarily their strongest suit as a team. 
I think you need to mix and match it a little bit. And and how can you not when you look at Sara, you look at Sarge, you look at Science? How can you not carry a threat going the other way for me? Um, and I certainly think if I look at this Leicester team, defensively, I think they can be got at. I think those two centre backs are quite upright, quite st static. You know, I wouldn't say they're the paciest. And if you've got Sargent with all the energy that we hope he can muster, that, that running into the channels and you've got Science running at players committing them as he did on Good Friday. And then Sarah, maybe in those pockets in just in between midfield and attack for Norwich, gets on the ball, then they can hurt any team in this league. And that includes Leicester. We're worldwide, Paddy. We've got Howard in Japan. We've got Dubai Canary saying hello. Hello to, to, to the Dubai Canary. And we've got Spanish Canary as well. And uh, he is, um, he is, and Peter, of course. We value Peter just as much wherever he's watching. Um, but that brings us nicely onto how we see this game going because certainly in terms of the form table, it feels like there's a real opportunity for Norwich here today. I think none, nobody is taking for, for granted um, because of Leicester's run and the form books and, uh, and whatnot. Certainly not David Wagner and his group of players. How do you see this one panning out for Norwich City today? I can I, I can see all three results. Oh, you've stolen me, stole me line there, Connor. I was, yeah, I can see all three as well. Um, just because of the quality they've got in their ranks, even though they're not on, it would seem, the best of form. Uh, and the confidence won't be as high, maybe, as the Norwich group. But they do have quality. Even the bench, you know, Inacho to be on the bench. Even Vardy at his age, you know, to be on the bench. I like Chowdhury as well. So, going to sit on the fence, I think, of the three results and go 2-2. Oh, I was going to go 2-2. Um, Still go 2-2? Yeah, I think I might. I had a stat about Easter uh, Monday that I was going to read. But yeah, I think I'm going to go for 2-2 as well. I think these uh, these teams, plenty of goals and, and may well just even themselves out, even though Leicester have been a little bit short on uh, on clinical edge as of late. Here is, here's, here's the one I wanted to uh, to read before we end. Uh, Norwich City have only lost one of their last nine league matches on Easter Monday, winning six of them. Last time they lost, Paddy, I mean, you can probably read that. Uh, it was a 4-1 defeat at QPR in April 2018, which, uh, which I think was the Daniel Farker one, wasn't it? So Somebody we won't mention who was uh, embroiled in something after oh, the back of that game, Oracle. Indeed, yeah. indeed. Um, so that, that is uh, that Norwich have, as a general rule of thumb, done quite well on Easter Monday. So let's hope they can maintain that run in what is a big week, big games. And then, of course, we can look ahead to Saturday's East Anglian Derby. Blinken.com, the place to go. We've got an offer on at the moment as well. You can get your first three months for £3. That's right, isn't it? Um, if you uh, if you take out a subscription, come join us over there. We've got a live match day blog. Brilliant second screen or first screen uh, material if you, if you want to join us over there. Um, debate and, and whatnot. And then we'll have all the analysis and reaction post-match as well. Uh, enjoy the game. Enjoy the rest of your Easter Monday. And uh, let's hope Norwich City can continue their fine run of, uh, of form. And we'll give a shout out to Danny as well as we go. Thank you for watching. See you soon.